Hey everyone, I got a written request in from Isaac in Indiana who wrote in, Hey Ian, can you please do a rant on dating methods? Sure Isaac, I'm glad to help you out there. As you know, I'm personally still a Christian guy looking for a young Christian lady. My favorite dating method is ChristianCafe.com, the online dating Christian dating site. Go there, you can fill out a profile, you can let the computer do a match for you, or you can do your own searches, and you know, maybe write the lady a letter saying, hey, how about you and I do Tim Hortons, eh? So, and you could. What do you mean you don't think that's what he's talking about? Isaac, what? He wants to date a rock? I don't think I can help him much. Then. Oh, oh, you mean like get an age of a rock? Like, like radio dating methods? Oh, yeah, yeah, I can help you out with that too, Isaac. Isaac is referring to radio dating methods. Now, this is a really complicated subject, so you're going to want to put on your thinking cap. Now, for you conspiracy theorists out there, a good quality thinking cap should fit comfortably underneath your tinfoil hat. However, if I may make a suggestion, not only does it guard against EMF, EMP, and unwanted government mind reading technologies, it also doubles as a hard hat. Radio dating methods are based on radioactive decay. For example, uranium is a radioactive element. It's so heavy it's actually a little out of balance. So every once in a while it throws a particle off. This is called radiation. Now uranium-238, for example, then turns into thorium-234. Thorium is the daughter element. But thorium is also heavy and unstable. So eventually it throws off a particle and turns into protactinium. Protactinium is also unstable, throws a particle off, and turns into another form of uranium, which then turns into another form of thorium, etc., etc. Eventually, all of this breaks down into lead, which is a stable element and doesn't turn into anything else. We can measure in a lab how long it takes for each of these breakdowns to occur. So, theoretically, we can take a look at a rock examine the ratio of parent to daughter radioactive elements and get a rough time scale and even be able to guess as to how old that rock is. But these radio dating methods invariably give ages of millions to billions of years. The Bible says the earth is only 6,000 years old. So do these radio dating methods contradict the biblical account of creation and the age of the earth? In short, no. Take for example the UN carat lava flows which flowed into Grand Canyon. These rocks were dated using a battery of radio dating tests. Six different potassium argon tests were run, getting ages of between 10,000 years old to 117 million years old. Five rubidium strontium tests said the rocks were actually 1.27 billion years old to 1.39 billion years old. The lead lead dating method said the rocks were in fact 2.6 billion years old. Rubidium strontium isochron method said that no, the rocks were actually 1.34 billion years old. Rubidium strontium isochron is supposed to be the holy grail of radio dating methods, not only to ascertain the age of a rock, but actually able to give us an indication of how accurate the age is or if the rock has been contaminated. So which age is the correct age? We have a spread of ages different by a factor of 260,000. Well, rubidium strontium isochron is supposed to be the most accurate of the methods, so let's go with that age. Oh. Did I mention that there's Indian artifacts in the lava flows, therefore we know the lava is actually 800 to 1,000 years old? Oops. This is certainly not an isolated case. A typical old earth geologist will reply with contamination. Well, obviously we have the wrong answer, therefore the sample must have been contaminated. Wait a minute, <laughs> that's shooting yourself in the foot. The only reason you are claiming contamination is because we found out the actual age of the rock based on archaeology after the fact. How about all those rock layers that we can't verify the age of, that you've assigned an age of millions, perhaps billions of years to? How can we trust those ages? The bottom line is, we can't. In fact, multiple modern lava flows have been dated using radio dating methods, and invariably they came back with ages of millions to billions of years. Obviously something is horribly, horribly wrong. And by claiming contamination after the fact, you just demonstrated how quickly and easily you are willing to reject your own dates based on the scientific methods of radio dating which give rock solid ages. Wait a minute, are the dating methods reliable or not? Talk about shooting yourself in the foot!
In fact, geologists really do pick and choose whatever dates they want. Don't believe me? Just examine for yourself the radio dating history of the famous Skull 1470. I covered this in part 21 of Complete Creation. Or check out the notorious dating of the famous Mars Rock ALH 84001. When geologist Dr. Steve Austin from the Institute from Creation Research took samples of the lava dome that formed in Mount St. Helens in 1986, he had them radio dated using the potassium argon dating method. He got ages of 340,000 to 2.8 million years old on rocks that were 10 years old. Well, Hanky and the folks at the No Answers in Genesis website just couldn't contain themselves, and they wrote, oh, I love this, Considering that the half-life of potassium-40 is fairly long, 1,250 million years, the potassium-argon method cannot be used to date samples that are much younger than 6,000 years old. A few thousand years are not enough time for argon-40 to accumulate in a sample at high enough concentrations to be detected and quantified. <laughs> Did these guys stop to think before they wrote? Did they not realize that they just admitted, in print, that if the Earth is only 6,000 years old, that their radio dating methods will give a wrong, incorrect age of millions, perhaps billions of years? Did they not realize that they just handed over the entire debate on a silver platter to a guy wearing a pot on his head? Oh, they really shot themselves in the foot this time. Plus, their claim gets more and more preposterous when you examine it. They said there was not enough time for argon to collect. Well, actually, that wasn't the problem. That's like saying this glass of water actually only has one drop of water in it. But the amount is so small that our scientific equipment, which is insanely expensive, can't read that small an amount. That's why it shows the glass falsely as being full when in fact it only has one drop. What school did these guys go to? If your scientific equipment can't read that small an amount, it's going to read an amount of zero, not a full glass. If the potassium argon method really worked, then it should show an age of zero for the Mount St. Helens rocks, not many, many, many millions of years old. You've got it backwards, guys. Lastly, Hanky just admitted in print one of the subtle assumptions you never hear about in radiometric dating, the assumption that the rock is millions of years old. Another subject you never hear brought up with radio dating is calibration. When a scientific method is developed, it is calibrated using known benchmarks. Well, when radio dating was invented, it was calibrated using the ages assigned to the rocks by evolutionary theory. Ages that were arbitrarily assigned. For example, in 1905, we knew that the dinosaurs were 8 million years old. In 1927, we knew that the dinosaurs were 30 million years old. In 1941, we knew that the dinosaurs were 150 million years old. Just as the ages of the dinosaurs and the rock layers that are in have changed over the years, so have the ages of the radio dating methods used to date those rocks. It's changed right along with our knowledge and what we know about the age of the rocks. If the radio date does not line up with the evolutionary assumptions, the radio date is assumed to be incorrect and it is thrown in the garbage. Radio dates are cherry-picked. It's just part of the system. In fact, in what has to be the ultimate irony, we can calibrate the radio dating methods. The Ewan Carrot lava flows, the Mount St. Helens lavas, the Hawaiian lava flows, all of these lava flows can be used to calibrate radio dating methods. Yet, instead of accepting the obvious conclusion that a radio date of 1.3 billion years old really means the rock is only a thousand years old, the radio dates are rejected out of hand with lame excuses. Why? Because we need millions and millions and millions of years for evolutionary theory to work. In fact, in my debate with Dr. David Kowerner from Northern Arizona State University, I had challenged him and offered to drive all the way down to Arizona so that he and I could take a sample of the Ewan Carrot lava flows and put it through any radio dating test he wanted in order to calibrate and test the system. He declined. Could it be because he already knows that any radio dating method he uses is already going to produce an age which is incorrect by millions or billions of years? Look, you can call radio dating methods anything you want, as long as you don't use words, you know, like reliable, trustworthy, scientific, or correct. 
I'm going to leave Cartman 14 for rant number 101, because that is a fun subject all on its own that pertains to what we talked about today. You know, instead of looking to the age of the rocks, perhaps we should be looking to the rock of ages, the Lord Jesus Christ who created these rocks and created you and me. He said that if we didn't cry out in praise, the rocks themselves would cry out in praise. I think the rocks themselves have already cried out and people didn't listen. Why don't you cry out to the creator of all things today?